compare the FBI profile with every person of interest I can find? Oh, my God. Hell yeah, somebody's got it. Is he going to let her in on it? Is it? Because Greg's is actually wasting so much Maurice time. Maurice Doby? For governor of my state? She Shit. That's some cynical politics right there. Playing that race card. Shameful. What if Upshaw wants to stay out of the race? Well, let's just say I am in negotiations. Well, I'll do everything I can to make sure this insurrection doesn't spread. Enough. And for my endorsement, you will return the favor and ignore our friends in Prince George's? And the loyalty of the West Side is going to cost me what exactly? Oh, well. Uh, Nothing big. Uh, you got three seats coming open on the liquor board? You get one seat. Two, and you have me out there raising money for you in the primary. Sold. It scares me to think of the damage you can do with two votes on the liquor board. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jimmy, you can't do this. A couple days more. Lester gets his best shot at Marlowe. After that, we'll never hear from the Red Ribbon Killer again. Have power, OT, lab work, cars. Just let me know. Knowing that's his friend is liking this. And now that they know, it's like, what do they do? Turn him in. You know the stable on Boo Street? Be there before not. Dad, do you a rabbit now? Bunk has a murder warrant on Chris Partlow. What the hell you say? Not one from the vacants. DNA match on an alley beating. He lets this go now. These guys are going to go to ground. We're right at the edge of something here. He's given us a couple of days. He owes me. I expedited his lab work for it. Omar Little, stick up boy. What about him? Caught one in a Korean joint over West Side. Bunk pulled that out of his pocket. She's Wagstad? Oh. The note reads like Omar had him under Marlowe's wing, lieutenant at least. That's the number. More pretending for the rest of the city. Oh, by the way, I, I told Greg's. Oh, McNulty, how many more people? How'd she take it? And Carver knows. And all the originals know, except for like Daniels. All of our citizens deserve the full protection of the law and the full support of the community. And we are saying to this senseless killer and to all the other ills that prey on those without shelter in our city, not tonight can you prey on them and not tomorrow. We will protect you. Thank you. Peace, we out of here. I mean, Carcetti's doing pretty good considering he has no clue all this is fake. And here's Lester with Clay Davis. Is that Clay Davis's wife? Is Lester gonna try to screw with Clay so that the FBI get their man? You're on my thing, right? I guess I owe you a drink on that. What's your points? I'm okay, Senator. Thank you very much. You think you could do that again? Excuse me? Except this time the jury's a federal one. Same nine, white, three black. Time for you to tip on out, detective. Now why don't you take that back to Billy Murphy? Ask your attorney what you're exposed to. At this point, this is just between us two gentlemen here. Senator. What? You trying to sell the case back to me? Motherfucker, you don't get it. I don't get paid like that. I get paid when I come back up in here in a couple of nights' time with questions and you, sir, have answers. Or well, my next call will be to the U.S. Attorney's Office. And we will go again. But for real. Clay obviously knows dangerous people. I hope Lester doesn't get, like, friggin' killed or something. You got my back? As best I can. Are they gonna... Scott! Oh. Is Scott gonna get reamed? Did they find out he's full of shit? A spike in your lead. I'm not running a story about a public gathering. A candlelight vigil at City Hall, in fact, where the lead anecdote, end quote, is from an unnamed homeless woman. She doesn't want to be known as homeless. Jesus Christ. Get to hell with you if you think I made it up. We have a standard that we follow here. I'm gonna follow it. Now he's going to go to the higher ups, though. The higher ups love it, Scott. He's going to go to the higher ups, and now Gus is going to probably get yelled at. See, here we go. And now he's going to get yelled at. Now Gus is going to get yelled at. Gus, let's discuss this. Actually, I did discuss it. I discussed it with the Metro editor, and he agrees. 
Now, the story's on the copy desk. And as a line editor working the story, I feel I've done my job. If you want to go another way, you pull the story back and re-edit. But we have a sourcing policy here, and I know it, and I do not feel comfortable bending the rules in this instance. And I... He looks like such a whiny baby, and everybody in the office was laughing at him because they all know it. And I wanted to thank you. I couldn't have done it otherwise. Uh, no problem. Tell me that affects them somehow. What's up, Shaw asking? Half of any uh, extra school or any crime money I get out of the legislature for Baltimore would go to PG County. Well, you take that deal in Baltimore, it's not half of what you want to bring back to the city schools. Yeah, but if I don't win, Jen, I bring back exactly nothing. He's like selling out, basically. He's going back on all his beliefs. Speedy? Hey, kiddo. Hey, McNulty. Where'd you go to? None of your business, really, Jimmy. Next time, I'm not going anywhere. Next time, you're going to be out on your ass because that is my fucking house. Is he going to try to fix it, even though That's I don't have any up. faith? I pulled the ADC book to find a location, and I'm on the same page number as the second hand. And I remember we had a lot of clocks with 34 seconds. Now, the second hand is always the map page. Longitude A through K is the hour. And for the latitude, they go by five-minute intervals. But if the clock has nothing to do with time, uh, they know when to meet. Everything's less than a half hour of driving, even in traffic. Well, my guess is that the standing logic is that they meet Rotate. an hour or so. <laughs> this clock face, when no one was on the move, the times are all at 35 seconds. And that's the page for East Baltimore. Cheese. Cheese wax that? Marlowe's wholesaling on the west side through Monk and on the east side with cheese. He's got the whole goddamn city. How do we know it's cheese? Oh. You too, huh? Not me. She's out. Everyone knows except Herc and Daniels. All the guys at the bar, Jimmy. All the girls. They don't show up at your wake. And not because they don't like you, but because they never knew your last name. Oh, Jimmy died. Jimmy who? Jimmy the cop. Oh, they say. Him. And all the people on the job. All the people you spent all those hours in the radio car with. The guys with their feet up on their desk telling stories. In the end, they're not going to be there either. Family, that's it. Family. And if you're lucky, one or two friends who are the same as family. That's all the best of us get. Everything else is just... There is no serial killer. Oh, shit. There are no murders. I made it all up. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Oh, my God. They, they, were, they were shutting us down. They were, they were just... I don't know how to make it stop. They fucking task me. They do. I... We took the money from the bullshit investigation and we routed it to Lester. Now he's got the cake to take down Marlo Stanfield. Maybe she's like, well, I've done all this. And I, at least you're not cheating I so watch much. myself do it. I can't even stand it. Lester says he's close. Time will pass and I'll be able to shut this thing down. If you don't go to jail. <laughs> you had no fucking right. I know. This is my life too. You start to tell the story, you think you're the hero, and then when you get done talking, you... She's going to be like, get out. Like, you're endangering my kids and me and everybody. Lester just said, how many? Uh-oh, what's going on now? Is this Omar? Last look at Mr. Little. Did they mix up the bodies? What, are they trying to show that, like, he literally has no one? Omar, literally, they didn't even have the right friggin' name for him. I cannot believe that is how Omar goes down. 
Prop Joe and Omar, two of my top fives, died from gunshots to basically the head at the mercy of someone else. Like, not even, like, battling it out. Omar did at least have that shootout in the apartment when he Batmaned out. But all that was so epic for nothing. He basically went to some corners, took risky moves. I even said in the reaction, why would you go to that corner where Michael was? That's where Kennard saw him. So, like, that was all for nothing. There's no need to go to that corner and have Michael tell Marlo. Everyone already knew he killed Servino. There was no reason to go to the corner and tell Michael to tell Marlo. That's where Kennard saw him, and that's who killed him. So had he not done that, it would have never amounted to his death. I'm really pissed off because it wasn't even like, oh, like Chris or Snoop got him, like they snuck up on him or something. He was followed by Kennard probably, because they didn't even say like, oh, it was little Kennard got him. No one even knew. They basically said like, oh, some little man wants to make a name for himself or something to that effect. But that's because Kennard probably followed him from the corner. That's I I was watching all their faces. Spider, Michael, Kennard was given dirty looks and following his eyes around the corner. And basically, Beatty gave the whole little speech about how only family and a couple friends matter. And then it even shows that they switched the names on the body bags because no one even gives a shit about Omar. They talked about it briefly at the paper and he goes, scratch it from the headlines because we have better things to write about. Omar was just swept under the rug like nothing and I get it maybe that's the whole thing maybe they're trying to show two of the biggest badasses literally went out like as if they were shit and if that's what they meant then obviously it has an effect but as a show watcher I want to see something more like epic and crazy literally gets popped in a convenience store by Kennard, who I thought was not even going to be around. After Michael beat the shit out of Kennard in, like, last season, I can't even believe that Kennard is working the corners with them. I thought he'd be in, like, a coma or, like, badly injured. So of all people, the smallest guy who I didn't even think would live last season is the one that kills Omar. Just like Cheese, who's another horrible piece of shit, is responsible for Prop Joe's death. Ridiculous. Besides that, McNulty has told Greg's now, has told Beatty. He's got that one cop, I cannot remember his name, but that was the cop he kept trying to fish the red ribbon stories to. What a piece of shit that guy is. He wants to go fucking golfing at Hilton Head, so he blackmails McNulty, when clearly they all see that McNulty's trying to do right. He's not, like, letting people fuck around. He's not using the overtime to fuck around himself either. He's literally helping people get their jobs done and get, like, rental cars and stuff like that to do their surveillance and then this fucking asshole comes around and says I know you're up to something I want to go play fucking golf what a piece of shit but I mean I can't get too mad because they're all corrupt pieces of shit everyone's doing crooked shit this guy is just a lot more selfish than most and to blackmail your fellow officer who you know is doing right that's fucked up then we have Clay Davis get away with murder, not literally, but probably Clay Davis somehow got a jury to believe his bullshit, steals hundreds of thousands of dollars, and now he's back on the board, basically. He's still Senator Davis, and now he's making deals with Carchetti where he's putting his own people back on the board and stuff. Blows my mind. But then we see Lester gives him an ultimatum. I think Lester's got more info on him, but Lester's playing a dangerous game. Clay Davis works with tons of shady people. Who's to say that Clay Davis won't be like, I'm not going through that again and fucking have Lester killed or something. All these people are playing dangerous games. And I think Beatty's had it. I don't think we're not going to see her again, but I think she's like, I cannot believe you're doing crazy shit like that. And it isn't even about herself in situations like that. Mothers are worried about their children. So basically, she can't even be around McNulty. If she did, she'd be endangering her children. So, so much crazy shit going on. I cannot believe Omar died like that. I honestly thought Omar would either live or at least make it to the finale. It's two episodes left. One episode is like a double episode, basically. Longest episode in HBO history or was until Game of Thrones finale. I don't know where they're going to go from here. It looks like everything's going to come to a head. They have to sum it all up and they have like two and a half, two hours and 40 minutes to do it. I'm just going to probably jump into the next one again, guys. 
You guys let me know what you think in the comments. I was blown away. I actually am very curious to see my reaction to Omar because it happened so quick. I like literally zoned out to the point where I don't even remember what I was doing or thinking at the moment. So I'm curious to see my own reaction to this one. Let me also know what you think of the audio. I think I fixed it pretty good now. Comments down below. Like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.